Welcome to Unit 4, Lecture 6. So in this unit, we're going to focus on cellular energy and work. Energy, from a scientific standpoint, is just the ability to do work. So in our case, that's anything that the cell has to do to function. So in order to ma making ATP is work. Transporting molecules is work. That's all work. Okay, and it's anything that you have to do. So it's part of your metabolism. Remember, your metabolism is every chemical reaction that happens in your body. So moving your blood around, that's work. And that is part of your metabolism. Uh, moving oxygen in and out of cells, moving carbon dioxide in, um, out of cells, moving water, okay? That's all part of the work. So that's part of your metabol metabolism. Some of it uses energy um, in the form of ATP, and some of it doesn't, but um, ultimately it all needs to be powered somehow. There are two ty types of uh, excuse me, two types of energy which you probably have heard of before. We've got kinetic energy, okay? So we've got kinetic energy, which is the energy of motion, anything that's doing something. Um, it basically is taking energy that's stored and using it to do something. Uh, roll down a hill, okay? That's kinetic energy. Um, in our case, you're talking about um, uh, moving, like, um, sorry, brain fart, um, talking about bringing molecules into the cell using active transport. That is using um, energy to do some work. Potential energy is energy that is stored energy. So that's energy that ever, you know, has the potential to do something. Okay, if you have potential, you have the ability to do something, you're just not doing it yet. Okay, so kinetic energy is doing it now. Potential energy is doing it in the future. Okay, so potential energy is stored energy, and it's, it's going to be transferred into kinetic energy eventually. Okay, um, chemical energy is a type of potential energy, and it's found in food. Okay, so all of your uh, food molecules are chemical energy, okay, that will ultimately break down through the process of cellular respiration to get to the ATP molecules, which will be used whenever we actually need the energy. So energy is subjected to a couple of laws of thermodynamics. We're not going to get too in-depth with them. Um, you're going to talk a lot more about them, maybe in chemistry and physics, okay, um, but we're, we want to touch on them. So basically, the first law of thermodynamics, and I don't know why I put first law as a bullet because it's called the first law of thermodynamics. Anyway, just like matter, energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred and transformed. Okay, so what happens is the chemical energy or potential energy stored in this ice cream cone turns into kinetic energy when you go to ride your bike, in the case of these kids. All right, another transformation, photosynthesis. Okay, we take the light energy and turn it into the chemical energy of glucose, okay, through the process of photosynthesis. All right, so that's just the first law of thermodynamics. Pretty straightforward. The second law of thermodynamics, little more complicated, and like I said, we're not really going to get too in depth with this, so don't get too worried about it. But the second law of thermodynamics is where energy um, in that process of transformation generally is lost, some of it is lost as heat, it becomes unstable. So when we talked about the trophic levels um, at the beginning of this year, and we talked about the energy conversion and heat, you know, lost as heat, what happens is that's what happens. That sounded weird. Okay. <laughs> The energy is lost as heat, um, and it becomes unusable for the time being. And then that increases what's called the entropy, which is the disorganization. Do not worry about this word too much. Um, like I said, you're going to talk a lot more about it later in your scientific career, but you are going to see it in the book, so I wanted to make sure that we talked about it. So releasing the heat increases the entropy. Now, when we talk about energy, we also have different kinds of chemical reactions. We've got two types, endergonic and exergonic. So in an endergonic 
chemical reaction. This is basically where we are storing energy. Okay, so we're taking molecules that have less amount of energy and we're putting them together into molecules that have more energy. So in the case of generally it makes bonds. Okay, generally we talk about making more bonds and making bigger molecules. Not always, but um, in the case of photosynthesis, photosynthesis is an endergonic chemical reaction because if we think about the uh, reactants of photosynthesis, we've got sun, we've got water, and we've got carbon dioxide. Now, obviously we don't have nutrition labels for sun or carbon dioxide, but if, we, if you have a nutrition label for a water bottle, how many calories is in a water bottle? Zero because there's no energy in the form of um, calories that we could burn to make things happen, okay? But when we put these together, we get C6H12O6, which has a ton of calories, okay? I forget exactly how many. Um, I think it's like 10 calories per every one molecule of glucose or something around there. If you take the nutrition class, you'll figure that out. Um, but we go from things that have zero calories to sugar, which has a calorie, okay? So then the opposite of that is cellular respiration, which is an exergonic reaction where we release the energy. So we take, okay, the glucose that we made here, and then we break it up into approximately 36 ATP molecules. So the energy is still there, okay, um, if you think about the first law of thermodynamics. So it's not necessarily like we're going from, um, you know, uh, what's it called? We're going from, like in the case of photosynthesis, where we're going from no calories to some calories, we're still, you know, doing that. We're breaking the calories up. It's like taking a $100 bill and breaking it up so you can actually use it in a vending machine, Okay, if you put a $100 bill in a vending machine, it's probably not going to work out so well. Okay, so what we do is we take that $100 bill of glucose and we break that $100 bill of glucose into a bunch of singles that we can then use for different things. So any one molecule of ATP has way less energy than um, one molecule of glucose. So here is a visual representation. So you can see here we start with no energy and we get energy in the product here we start with lots of energy and a lot less energy in the product so if you are a visual person that's very helpful so the last thing i wanted to talk about was atp so atp is the cellular battery as i like to call it okay adenosine triphosphate and what it does is it works to power that cell metabolism. So ATP is adenosine, which is an adenine and a ribose. Okay, it ends in ose, so ribose is a sugar. Okay, and adenine, all right, is a, um, a nitrogen compound that I'm just gonna leave alone for right now because we're gonna talk a lot more about it when we get to DNA. And then phosphate groups. So through the um, so cell cellular respiration, I'm tripping over my words a lot today. Cellular respiration is basically the process of phosphorylation, where we add that phosphate. So ADP, okay, ADP has two phosphates. So it's not fully charged. If we were to think about ADP, it's your cell phone on maybe 20%, okay? Um, it could probably do something if we really needed it to, uh, but we really don't wanna waste that energy, okay? So through the process of cellular respiration, what we do is we add that third phosphate, which basically makes it fully charged. And so what happens is ATP through the process of phosphorylation using cell respiration. Okay, we add on that phosphate and that allows ATP to go around and do all of its work 
all over the cell. ATP is constantly moving and it's constantly running. So it's a really important molecule to make plenty of. So that is why the mitochondria is really important. And individuals that suffer from mitochondrial disease have um, a lot of issues because trying to make that ATP is very hard for them. And that ATP basically runs everything, okay? So we go from ADP, which is not charged, to ATP, which is fully charged. And so cellular respiration is like plugging your cell phone in uh, to charge it or your laptop or anything like that. Okay, so there's different types of work that happen, and I'm not going to necessarily go through all of these specifically, but ATP basically makes transport work, mechanical work, and chemical work all happen. All right, and so it's really important. Okay, wrap up. Okay, list three things your body does during the course of the day that are part of your metabolism, and then list four specific examples of cellular work that is being done by your body today. Okay, I will see you in class. Have a great day.